In this video, we are going to look at one of the attacks that can bypass multi-factor authentication, which is known as pass the cookie. The concept here is that if a user logs into a web application or a SaaS site, um, they will go through whatever multi-factor prompts are in place to validate they are who they say they are. But after that's done, their authentication gets stored um, in a cookie within the browser, and that will be used for single sign-on. So as the user navigates the site, they are not constantly prompted to log in and provide a second factor of authentication every link they click within the site. These browsers get stored, or these cookies get stored in the browser. Uh, Google Chrome actually stores theirs in a SQLite database that is encrypted using the data protection API. And if an attacker is able to use the data protection API to decrypt those secrets, they can extract the cookies, bring them to whatever system they want to, inject them into their own browser session and take over that user's account. So let's take a look at how that works in a real world environment. Here I have my regular user's workstation and this user is an administrator of Microsoft Azure. So he's going to log in here with his user account, Tobias, and he is going to enter his password as his first form of authentication. So let me paste that in. And then he's gonna be uh, prompted for a second form of authentication, which in this case is using the Microsoft Authenticator app. So to log in, the user would have to have Tobias's phone, which an attacker is gonna have a difficult time getting their hands on. So I'm gonna pull my phone up here so you can see how this works. So if I use my Authenticator app, you can see I have to type in this code that expires after 30 seconds um, and then continually rotates. So I'm gonna type that in before it expires. And that's how I verify that I actually am Tobias. So now once I'm logged in, I can use the portal, I can navigate wherever I want, and as I go, it doesn't reprompt me for login. But under the covers, that's working because there are cookies that are stored for that authentication, and those are used as you navigate through the Azure services. Let's say an attacker wanted to exploit that. Here, I have my Kali Linux system. And you can see I'm running PowerShell Empire, which is going to let us get a foothold on that, that user's workstation and send commands and receive information back so that we can extract all those cookies and bring them back to our attacker workstation here. Um, so the first thing we need to do is get that user to open up a reverse shell. To do that, I've created a stager, which will um, use VBA embedded in a Word document. So all the user has to do is open that Word document. Maybe they got a successful phishing email. Once they do, it opens up a reverse shell to my PowerShell Empire running on Kali Linux. And now I have command over this system running within that user context. So if I come here, I can see all the agents that I have access to um, and I can interact with any of them. I'm gonna interact with this agent here. And now I have the ability to run commands. I'm gonna run a command that's gonna extract all of those cookies from the Google Chrome um, database using Mimikatz, which has built-in capabilities to use the data protection API for the user to decrypt all those blobs. So I just have to type in my command. Um, so all I need to do is provide the location of the Google Chrome cookie database, which is typically stored in the same place in the local app data directory, Google Chrome, user data. And then I'm going to unprotect it and send that command over to my system. And in a few seconds, it should give me back all of the decrypted cookies. There they are. So there's gonna be a lot of them here. I don't really care about most of them. There's a, a few cookies that are of interest to me. Each site is gonna use its own cookies. Uh, I do care in this case about this cookie here, this authentication cookie. All I'm gonna do is copy that 
come to my browser. You can see it's trying to get me to log in. If I try to say uh, I'm Tobias, it's going to ask me to enter my password. I don't know the password. I do know the cookie though. So I'm going to inject that into my session here. And I'm going to create a new entry. Make sure that it sticks around. Okay. And now open up a new tab. And you can see I've bypassed all multi factor controls and I can log in as Tobias and have full access um, to all the services in Azure here. So that video just showed how you can use uh, different attack techniques to bypass MFA using the pass the cookie approach. And to prevent against this, against this, you want to make sure for Google Chrome, especially you're monitoring your DP API secrets. There's a master backup key stored in Active Directory. You want to make sure nobody gets their hands on that. Um, you also want to make sure you recommend privilege access workstations for your administrators, have strict policies on browsers and cookie expiration, monitor access to the cookies database, and of course, monitor what your administrators are doing in your critical SaaS applications. To find out more about attack strategies and how to defend against them, go to netrix.com attack.